So, so right now we are at the main dashboard, right? And mm -hmm. just so that it's in the recording, uh, I'm gonna comment on a couple things that would apply to all transactions. And the first of which is this hamburger icon opens the menu for the system, for the entire platform, right? But when you're in a transaction, and we'll just click in here to Pearl Street, there's a hamburger on the right side, and that opens the menu for the actual transaction itself that you're in. And so we're already in Pearl Street, and so this is where we wanna work. So these are the forms that you've already uploaded. Form 2135 KJEDA. It's also, I found helpful to keep the listing itself up on a different tab because then I can reference it. I can see what their attachments are. I can see the age of the house, you know, so I know if it needs a 22J or not, that sort of thing. I click on the supplements, it'll open a new window and it's going to give me a list of all the things that are already in here, right? Mm -hmm. so Pre-inspection, 22E, J, K, legal, form 17, sewer scope, exterminator receipt, and title. The only things I'm going to use for the offer are 22E, J, K, legal, and form 17. These other items I would share with my client. So you probably already looked at them, right? So yeah. if you want, we can look at the title report when we're done writing the offer to, to answer any questions you may have. But okay. this, this also tells me that I now no longer need to upload these three forms because we always want to use the listing broker provided forms if they've provided it. If they okay. have, then I'll upload a blank one and use that. But because they have, I want to use theirs because the seller's already signed up, right? So now if I go right. back over here, I can actually, oh, I gotta, I'm going to open up this menu. I'm going to go to the forms. So now I'm in the bigger view of the forms and I am going to delete 22E. J and 22K. We're still going to use them in our offer, but we're going to use the listing broker provided ones. All right. Now, the other yep. thing that I'll do from here, or I can do it from here, is I want to edit the forms, right? Mm -hmm. So all we have to do is click on them and it'll open up the form. Now this is in the editable condition. The really important thing, let me close back out of here, that you wanna remember is the, the forms that reside in Transaction Desk are different than where they are residing in a signing. And the reason I'm spelling this out to you is because if I'm preparing the signing and I notice there's a typographical error, I have to delete the form out of the signing, go back into this part of the site and fix the typo and then re-upload it. Because they sort of reside in two different places, when I want to fix something, I actually have to delete it out of the signing, fix it in the forms, and then re-upload. Does that make sense? Okay. And I'll, I'll show you if we run into it, okay? So yeah. So I'm in the forms, part of Transaction Desk. I'm editing the form. They have a review date of today, but you're making it expire tomorrow. Is that because that's what they asked for? Oh, no, no. I just did. Um, I just used the, the one on the 17th Avenue as a reference. Oh, okay. That's what we did last time. Yeah. Uh, please submit by noon. Sometimes they will say, hey, give us till the next day. But since they did not, we want okay. to expire today because they can use our our offer to leverage up somebody else right we don't want that okay all right you're going to do married as a separate property we got the address we don't have the appliances so i'm going to go back to the listing and just go down here 
Here's where the appliances are. So it's fridge, range, washer, dryer, and dishwasher. Range, fridge, washer, dryer, dishwasher. There's probably a garbage disposal, which would we would have to put down here, but but I'm not certain, so I'm just gonna leave that off for now. Okay. If you know there is one, you you would list it because you don't want people stealing it and then saying, well, you didn't include it in your offer, right? Okay. So earnest money is gonna be sent by wire three days after mutual to be held by the closing agent. If it defaults, it's forfeiture. Sometimes they'll put a title order number, and that's what this second half of the line is for. But let's see if they did. I couldn't find any. Yeah, they did not. So that's fine. We can leave it blank. Closing and basically in a month. Possession not until September. Is that what they asked for? Yeah, they want to um, live there until they can move to the new house end of august August 31st okay good you're being generous uh 22k requested assessments assumed by buyer and you check that because you realize there's probably no assessments right no i i copy that from from the, the last okay. offer that's something i don't understand either what that means yeah so uh in king county when a builder builds a house they will connect the sewer and the county will charge them $15,000 for the connection. But over the years, they've reached an agreement that says the county will bill the homeowner rather than the builder. And they call that an assessment that they've amortized over 15 years. So just remember, anytime you're writing an offer on a home that's younger than 15 years old, it may have an outstanding balance on this sewer assessment, in which case you might want the seller to pay it, right? Or at least it's a point of negotiation. In a market like this, where it's white hot seller market, you, you rarely will check this box. In a normal market, you'll almost always check it, right? But you don't wanna okay. look the house over a $2,000 outstanding balance, right? And if um, the balance is to be paid by the buyer, um, is it going to be included in the property tax or is it due at closing? How is that? Uh, no, because it's amortized, you would just take over the payments. Okay, so I'll receive a separate bill from the county for this yeah. specific item. Okay. Yeah, and title will prorate whatever amount is owed for the current year, they'll prorate it to the day that we close, and then you'll take it over going forward. I see. So 15 years um, before now, or it's always 15 years at um, at the time of the offer. 15 so years from the day it was built. From the day it was built. Okay. Yeah, so because this home was built in 1941, there's no sewer assessment. That's why you can check this box and it's not gonna have any financial impact on you. Gotcha, okay. If this were a condominium, then there's bigger issues than just the sewer assessment. But for houses, it's really just the sewer assessment for the most part, okay. right? Okay, okay. Uh, listing broker, selling broker, right? So we are financing. And then are we doing any increased down payment language? Mm, no. Okay. And then J and then K. Do you want to do an escalator clause? No. So uh, do you want to have an inspection or wave inspection? Wave inspection. So let me look at the listing and see if there's anything else that we should have noticed. We got the year bill. It's not a bank owned, it's not a short sale, and it is not on sewer or well. So there's no unusual addenda that we wanna add. We do need- um, Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, 
We, we also need to add form 22E down here. And I don't know why, but it's not in the drop downs. And we have to add a reference to exhibit A. I have uh, just created this little note that I can hit control A, control C. Okay. And then control V. And now I've got both of those addenda added, right? And why are they always at the very last line? Because they're not in these drop downs. Oh, okay. And the last line is the only line out of all of these blank lines that is fully editable. Gotcha. Here you could also add things like, you know, if the builder had his own addendum or the sometimes I wrote one this morning, the listing broker had their own addendum, form 42. So this is like a free form field. So we can put whatever we want in there. Okay. If it's an MLS form, 90% of the MLS forms can be found in this Dropbox or drop down, right? Okay. Uh, we, we don't have form 65A, which we probably want because of the rent back. Because of the what? Because you're gonna become the landlord to the seller, right? So let me just make sure I got the right form number. 65A and 65B are the rent back or, or earlier delayed possession. So 65B oh, okay. is the rent after closing. So that's the one we want. So, oh, okay. Uh, I didn't think of it as a rent. I just thought it wouldn't hurt for them to live another month. So uh, yeah. am I supposed to collect rent? Well, it would be a strength of your offer to offer it for free. Yeah, I would, I would, I was prepared to do that. Yeah. So, but we still want the form in there so that you and they have the tenant relationship defined okay. and protected because okay. ability, right? So we want, yep. we want everyone to know that, Hey, I'll, I'll let you stay there, but you got to pay for your own rental insurance. I'm going to pay for homeowners insurance, but, but that's not going to cover your belongings. So if there's a problem, you got to have your own rental or your own insurance, oh, right? Okay. So that's what Form 65B is for. Yeah. And it'll spell out who's going to pay for utilities, right? Because that's something that you want to oh, pay. Okay. Yeah. See, I never thought of those parts. So, so one thing that's not in this group of forms is, is that form. So now I'm going to add that form because we were going to want to edit it. So we're adding it to our list, right? Mm -hmm. But let's go through these in more. Of oh, uh, yeah, Ed, um, do you mind doing a quick CMA on this property so that yeah, we can if you that. think it can appraise very close yeah. to my offer price, I will waive the appraisal addendum yeah. uh, let's, contingency. Let's Let's uh, let's write the offer and mm -hmm. stop the recording, and then oh, sure. uh, we can do a separate recording of the CMA. So you're doing first with twenty percent down. Yeah. Apply in five days. Now. There's two ways for you to waive financing. The first one is they have to compel you. The second one, it expires. Do you have a preference? The second one is um, than the first one. The second one is what? Is stronger, more compelling. It's automatic waive. It expires. So we give them a, a time, we give them a time frame. Right, we would we would probably go with like 21 days, at which point you would have your appraisal back. Okay, and finance, and I would know that financing would should be no problem. Right, that's the goal is to, we want it far enough in the future that we can feel peace of mind that we're gonna have all the answers we need to know that we wanna proceed. 
And what is option A? What does that option, mean? Option A does the same thing, but the difference is in order for it to be waived, the seller has to compel you to waive it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Option B. All right. So we're going to do that. We're going to do that. And then uh, if you waive financing, do you want to also waive low appraisal? That's something that we will find out after doing the CMA. Well, and it's really a bigger issue of whether we, we know it in time, 21 days. Uh, uh, appraisal should take shorter than 21 days, right? Absolutely, especially if you're waiving inspection because they can order the appraisal right away. Yeah, 21 days is fine. Is it, is it a very common number people put in? Yeah. Yeah, actually it is. Smart, okay. like us. <laughs> After any closing costs from the seller, right? All right. So I would the, love to, but. <laughs> this form is done, but we might edit it after uh, we do the CMA. All right. Okay. So now 22D. All right. We always check paragraph one. We never check paragraph two. You can check paragraph three, but it might be a benefit to tell them that they don't have to clean the house. Oh, um, okay. Not a big issue for me. Yeah, I wouldn't think, especially if you're gonna do some updating. Personal mm -hmm. property, we always check because if they leave anything, we don't mind if they leave it, but we wanna be able to throw it away if they leave it. Right. Public water, public sewer. Does the home have natural gas? No. It does have telephone and electricity. Probably has cable and internet. All right. And then we want to check the form 17 to see if there's any leased items in the house. Like they might have at least water heater or a security system. So oh, okay. We're going to go here to page three, I think it is. Yeah. If any of the following fixtures is included, are they leased? So we're just looking to see if there's any yeses right here. Okay. And because there's not, we're going to actually say that there are no leased items. We don't need to fill in these forms because we don't. there's no copies of leases to be obtained. We just want the seller to confirm that he told the truth when he said there wasn't any leases because we don't want to be surprised, right? Yeah. This property is not in an HOA. Uh, we're not going to ask the seller for a warranty. We are going to disclose buyer is a licensed Washington. Right? Mm -hmm. Disclose that in any offers that you write. Okay. And that's it. I think. Wait. We don't want that. We want a 35. Oh, you added that for Oh, yeah. We want, we want the waiver one, which is 35W. 35W, okay. Yeah, so we're going to add that. And then why, is there, why are there two, uh, two same forms on that list? They're not the same. One is a, an inspection contingency, and the other is a waiver of the inspection. Okay, so we only select the wa waiver. Yeah, at least in this market, yeah. Normally, we actually have inspections on almost every deal, but we have a normal market for about four years. So maybe this is the new normal. All right. So I know. This is the rental agreement. We're okay. going to rent is zero per week. NA. Term is. It terminates on September 1st or August 31st? 
August 31st. That's the last day they can live there, right? Well, you put September 1st on the possession date. Mm -hmm. so to terminate would, on. That would mean 9 p.m. on September 1st. Oh. Do you really want okay. to August 31st? That's what I would so, do. Yeah, August 31st, if okay. it means 9 p.m. of that day. So we're actually going to go back and change Form 21 because it says September 1st currently. We're going to change it to August 31st. Okay. All right. Then we're going to get down here. We're, we don't really know what it has, but we know it needs to have smoke detectors. We don't think it has a sprinkler system or an alarm system, right? Uh, when you have a hardwired smoke detector, is it can we use the same one that you showed us on Home Depot, or it has to be different kind of um, fancier smoke detector? Uh, it's it's they're in the same place in Home Depot, but they're two different models. I and see. Okay. They're not really very different in price, but one of them has a receptacle for a battery, and the other is wired to be tied into an electrical system. Okay. Yeah, hot wired ones are much better. They are. I probably yeah. go with the hot wire one. But in a home of this age, because remember, you're not gonna have made any improvements while they're living there. You can't even yeah. start your work until September 1st. So it's what's ever there now. And a home of this age is unlikely to be hardwired. Right. But if it is, they'll they'll just change it and initial it. We're, we're oh yeah, okay, yeah. I, I forgot this was the rental agreement. <laughs> right, exactly. Building does not have an emergency plan. Doesn't have a relocation plan. It doesn't have an evacuation plan. All right, and then I want to make sure. Land, landlord agrees to insure the property against fire and normal casualty. All proceeds of any such policy shall be payable to landlord alone. Landlord shall have no responsibility for insuring anything in or on the property which belongs to tenant. Tenant is to advise that renter's insurance is available. So that's covered. We just want to make sure that was addressed. So now we can hit save. We can okay. hit out of there. And we already did the waiver. And now we got to change form 21 because we're changing the possession date from September 1st to August 31st, right? Yep. Over that. So it's always 9 p.m. of whatever date you put in into yeah. possession date. Yeah, yeah, exactly. August 31st, 2021. So now I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to X out of this. Now we're going to create the signing. Did you put yourself as the broker? I didn't even look. Do we, are we required to put in the broker's name? I, I don't remember. Putting well, if you use the wizard, you get to a part of the wizard that, uh, yeah, you put yourself in. Okay. Oh, I think it's all of Phil. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, I'll show you. See this contact section? Uh huh. So you're listed as the selling broker and the buyer. Did, did the MLS just automatically do it for me? Because I don't when remember you, listing myself. When you launch the wizard, there's a checkbox that says, do you want to include yourself as the selling broker? Okay. And it okay. defaults to being checked. Got you. Now, we should change your name to...
How do you want to sign your name? Um, Justin Gant. Okay, and leave out Tracy. When I sign, I sign Tracy Gant, but I don't think people can read it. Yeah. X G. Does that look okay? It's J G actually when I initial. Okay. Yep. You got your license and everything in there. And confirm address. Oh. All right. So now it'll auto populate the same way. Oh, that's interesting. Why did it not? Does it have to be up here. I think there's a length limit. <laughs> yeah, but it should have. Anyway, let's see if it refreshes. No, that's weird. All right, so now we're going to create the signing. What's the MLS number? The MLS number one seven nine one one two zero. Participants, you're going to sign it as yourself, and you're going to sign it as the buyer. Documents. Yeah. Probably need all of them. No, we don't need that. We don't need that. Need that. We don't need that. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna take this all the way through to where I would hit send for you to sign and then we'll stop the recording so we can do the CMA in case we want to change anything, all right? Okay. So buyer, landlord. Oh now it shows Tracy here. Yeah, that's you the broker. But you you the landlord will be the one without Tracy. Yeah. All right, now we wanna sort them in alphanumeric order, right? Oh, we don't. Mm -hmm. So that means that 22K is gonna come all the way up. 22J is going to go even higher. 22E is going to get even higher than that. And 65B is going to go down one. Technically, the legal description is Exhibit A of the purchase and sale. So it goes ahead of Form 17. Okay. Now we got 21, 22A, D, E, J, K, 35W, and 65B. So now we can start adding initials and signatures where needed and edit. So there's a couple edits I always make on my offers. One of which is I add or sooner to the close date, because if both parties agree to that up front and the lender gets you in a position to close early, then you don't have to circulate any addenda to actually close early, you've already got it sort of pre-authorized. Okay. 
I think that's what I did on the purchase and sales agreement. Well, you can't. When you have this form, there's no way to put text right here. Oh, oh, okay. But you can always add text when you're in the authenticine view because okay. you have that freedom. So let me. So I'm just going to type or sooner. And then I always change the font size to 13 and bold because then it looks like it belongs there. Right? Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes you'll add a time up here. Like if I want my offer to expire at, at noon or 5 p.m. But on this one, we, we're just going to let it expire at 9 p.m. That's the default. Okay. Now I'm just making sure that all the initials showed up like they're supposed to, which they did. And then another edit that I always make is deleting this clause because... This clause gives the buyer a free out. A cheap out, right? We don't want that, right? Mm -hmm. and by deleting this, this does a couple of things. One, it demonstrates to the seller and the listing broker that we are dead serious and we want this home. The other is it tells the listing broker that you know these contracts inside and out because most Listing brokers won't even know what this clause says because they've never actually read the agreement. But we're better than that, right? So we read it and we know that we don't need it as a protection. Now we're going through and we're just seeing, okay, is there any other edits we need to make? And did the initials that show up automatically show up? Wow, this 22E is huge. We Fortunately, we don't have to sign 22E. We only have to sign it if they are a foreign national. So if they had checked this box, then we would have to acknowledge down here that there is a tax liability for the seller. 22 okay. a Now, this is weird. This agent oh. put the buyer or the seller's name as the buyer. Yeah, I, I figured. <laughs> so we're, we're not going to do that. We're going to fix that. But we're going to first add. Why is this so huge? Look at that. Can we zoom out? No, it won't let me. It's because the listing broker doesn't know how to scan. And, and she put the buy, she put the seller's name on the buyer line. Right. So I'm wrestling, should I make it bigger or should I stick with what I always do? I'm gonna stick with what I always do. Okay. But we're also going to strike Margaret's name. All right. So we got the date. We got your name added. The other thing we want to do on this form is we want to waive the right to do any testing. Okay. And that's because there is almost 100% likelihood that there is lead-based paint in there but it's covered by decades. Layers. Yeah. We talked about that. So I know. Yeah. You. The size of this thing is screwing up how the system is dropping these. I know, it's frustrating. Visuals. Right click, add a date stamp. I can do control C and control V and drop. Initials, right click and date stamp. All right, so now I've got everything I need on there, except you have to sign date and you have to sign as, oh shoot, 
I've been dropping <laughs> on. You know what? It's not going to matter. Is this one of the forms where um, offender sign can um, locate the places people need yeah, to Yeah, it, it can't because it's already been signed and converted to a PDF. So I see. different types of PDF files. And because this one's not a form per se. Okay. Because this is a form uploaded by the other side, right? Right. So it's kind of weird because they're all PDFs, but the other PDFs, the forms have been mapped. So the system has had been pre-programmed to recognize, oh, that's this form, which means the signatures go here. Okay. So I think it's just the way it's scanned. It's just weird. Exactly. Yeah. I'll get it. Date. We're going to put your signatures on it. All right. Now, this form it recognized. This form. It recognized and signed. Now we got a legal, it's ginormous. Just gonna initial it. Now the form 17 is ginormous. So the other thing that we're gonna do on this form 17 is we're gonna waive the right to revoke the offer. And that makes the offer stronger because in form 17, you have a free three day opportunity to get out of the deal. Mm -hmm. We wanna to communicate to the seller that we don't want out of the deal. So we're willing to waive that, right? Mm -hmm. We've done our due diligence. We know what we want and we know we wanna proceed. So now everything is ready to send to the consumer and to be signed. And to do that, I would click next. And I would click send. Okay. But I'm actually going to stop the recording right here so that we can do this quick CMA to make sure we don't want to change anything, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm.